Uh, I want to share with you uh, what I would consider to be an excellent prototype uh, using prostate cancer uh, as an example of how one can practice integrative medicine. This talk probably would be best given to first-year medical students to indoctrinate them into a new way of thinking about a medicine. Uh, but let me just share with you a few thoughts. First of all, we heard earlier today a very nice presentation from Dr. Amen about uh, the importance of the brain and the importance of traumatic brain injury. Well, I want to, uh, first of all, uh, let you know I'm very grateful to be here uh, because I've been in two major total collisions, uh, and to point out that uh, in discussions of prostate cancer, more men are said to die with prostate cancer than from it. And if that's the case, we should be asking ourselves, what are we doing about changing why more men are dying with this disease than from it? So let me share with you a very basic uh, integrative hypothesis that all complex life forms start as a fertilized egg that undergo exponential division. And that in the mature organism, biological links persist between all cells, between tissues and organs, due to the single cell origin. And that all living entities manifest a unity of function, balance and communication, when healthy. And that all of health and healthcare must be integrative for it to function optimally. So let me tell you about my practice uh, in, in terms of prostate cancer. I started specializing in prostate cancer in 1983. Uh, I started doing research on LHRH agonists and antiandrogen six years before FDA approval. I noted that a significant number of my patients had significant arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And because of my own interest in ultrafast CT, having been one of the earlier uh, patients for ultrafast CT quantification of, of coronary calcium, I looked at these patients with ultrafast CT and with electron beam tomography, actually down in Newport Beach, California. And as part of the electron beam tomography, these patients also had uh, bone density with QCT, quantitative computerized tomography. And it was really striking to see the number of patients uh, that had severe bone loss picked up on QCT. This was not really documented before. This is going back now to really the, the mid-80s, late-80s. So a typical patient would be one that presented, obviously, with prostate cancer that had bone loss and that was sent off to look at uh, their coronaries. And this would be a typical picture of, of a patient with significant uh, coronary calcification very high coronary calcium scores. This was so common that it looked to me like this could even be considered a syndrome. Prostate cancer, bone loss, and coronary calcifications, as well as calcium deposits in major blood vessels. I want to, again, reemphasize that these problems became obvious when using quantitative computerized tomography. And this may be one of the more important uh, take-home lessons of, of this presentation, and that is that the so-called gold standard, DEXA, uh, really is not the optimal test to use in the setting of men who are in their 40s and beyond, because such patients are going to have a high incidence of osteoarthritis, aortic calcifications, and also other problems like vertebral deformities and scoliosis. So we're using a test DEXA in a population of patients who have this as an uh, underlying medical problem and are going to have false elevations of the bone density, giving you a misread uh, on what's really going on. Now, if you look at QCT, it's really truly a volume density study. It's not an area density study. And it's looking at, really, uh, the lumbar spine, which is really trabecular bone that is being looked at, Trabecular bone is eight times as metabolically active as is cortical bone. 
Trabecular bone is where all of these bone-derived growth factors are, are, are found. So what we did was we started to look at patients to see whether or not DEXA was, was significantly different than QCT. And we, tried to, we started with a pilot a study of 14 patients. And we realized that in those 14 patients who had both DEXA and QCT, that 7% of those patients were found to have osteoporosis with DEXA compared to 50% with QCT. Not only that, but if you look at the total amount of patients with osteopenia or osteoporosis, 100% of our patients in this small pilot were found to have either osteopenia or osteoporosis, and roughly half of the patients using DEXA scan were found to have osteopenia or osteoporosis. So we felt we had something important happening here, an important observation, and we were planning to publish this when we got to about 20 patients, 25 patients. I'll come back to this in a while. An important part of what we learned early on with prostate cancer stemmed from the work of Charles Huggins, one of my teachers at the University of Chicago, who received the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1966 for showing that prostate cancer was very much a hormonally dependent malignancy and that removing male hormone could induce remission in a vast majority of patients.